Okay, welcome to week two of this buyer workshop that I'm doing for the agents that are in my area. However, I just thought I'll just put it up on my YouTube channel and anyone can benefit because in the future, um, I always ask, have people ask about certain questions and it's nice to just have the video to go back to. So this is week two and I have a presentation here that I'm just going to kind of review from week one where we talked about the marketing. Week one is all about marketing. If you do enough marketing, you won't have to do sales. And that's in real estate. A lot of what we do is sales, but it, it could be the sales part of it can be eliminated if you do enough marketing and the people start calling you, but you have to do the marketing pieces. And so we did a review and we talked about the four places that buyers come from, people you know, offers you create, purchase them, or you could do cold calling. So um, I'm just going to, this is just review. So this is all from week one. We talked about what offers are. This is all in week one video. So I'm just going to kind of skip over it. The homework that we wanted, that I wanted everyone to do in week one was choose your source. Like how are you going to get those leads into your funnels? Um, what is, what is your plan look like in order to create that funnel? And then to, I wanted everyone to time block the activities in your planner, make sure that you got your Lofty account set up and make sure that you get your VIP spreadsheet set up. So all of those items were the homework and you'll see all of those in week one in the video if you watch that. So this is week two. So now, and there's a lot of homework, a lot of the stuff I can tell you guys how to do it, but you have to go do the homework, you, you know, I just posted a post the other day about how back in school, if you think back to when you were in school, were you the kid who got the homework done or were you the one who just kind of jumped in last minute was still able to pass, but never did any of the homework in real estate, you have homework. It's all about setting up your business. And so you, you have to get the homework done because that's, that's you creating your business. So now we're, you did week one and now week two, I have a buyer. Now what, what do I do? I get this all the time. I have an appointment and I don't know what to do. And, you know, you can say this all the time and think, you know what to do, but you don't, you freeze. If you're like me, you're just going to freeze and be like, uh, what do I do now? Like, you know, this is what I work so hard to do is to get a client, but now what do I do? So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I don't have a lot of slides for today because I'm going to be jumping off of um, Canva into my Google Drive and into other areas to really go over all of these with you. So what we're going to talk about today is the whole process, the buyer process. I'm going to open up a doc. I'm going to share it with you and I'm going to share it in the chat and then I'll share it again in the YouTube description so that you can print that out. But the whole process, we're going to talk about the buyer appointment, the buyer packet and how to put that together how to make sure that the buyer is pre-approved and that you're ready to go and get them set up on a search. And once, once you get all of this done, then you're off to find a property. And so what does that look like? So we're going to, we're going to really talk about that. So the first part I want to talk about is the process I created back when I don't know when, like probably 15 years ago, this document called the home buying process. I cannot stress to you how important it is to have this first conversation with a buyer in a live meeting, like over coffee. I do it over coffee. I would always say, okay, great. Well, I have some paperwork to go over with you. Can you meet me for coffee on Tuesday at 11? And let's get to know each other and go over this paperwork. Does that sound good? 
And then that's what they do. And they always say, yes, who's going to turn down a cup of coffee? And then I would always buy their coffee, sit down at a at the table with them and just open up the conversation and go over these things. So this first document that I have goes in my folder. So you have Epic folders, then, you know, open it up and fill it with this information so that when you go to meet them for coffee, you sit down and you're ready to show them that you're an awesome agent, that you did your homework and that you're going to continue to be a great value to them through this whole process. So this document is what I put in the very front of my folder. And then I organize my folder all behind this document. So I always put a home warranty document, like a, something from the home warranty company in my folder. And I always, I have all of these um, brochures on my, on, in my office on a table over here. And so I grab whatever I need to put in there, but the title companies usually make really nice buyer documents that you could use to give your buyers. And you don't want to put too much in here and overwhelm them. Your job is to educate them, not overwhelm them. So you're trying to make it simple. So I pull out this document here and I, I explain to them that I'm going to go over this, but just to give them an idea of what we're about to do, these are the items that I go over. I say, okay, first of all, the first thing that we're going to do after our appointment today is make sure that you have your pre-approval set up from a lender and that you have that document because we really don't want to start looking at properties until we make sure that you're pre-approved and we know what price point to actually go look at. And um, I tell them that's why. And then I say also that once that's done, and if at the end of our meeting today, you decide to work with me, which I really hope that you do, because I really like you or whatever you say, um, then, you know, I'm going to email you the documents that are over here. And I put on the other side of the folder, I put a blank copy of all of the buyer docs, the buyer rep, the wire fraud, the IABS, I put just a blank copy with my information on and, and I just clip it all together, put it in the folder to send that home with them so they could look that over. And then I follow up the next day and I say, did you have a chance to look at all of those documents? And if they, you know, if they want to work with me and we're trying to set up home showings the following weekend, then they're going to have to sign all of those via e-signature. I don't have them sign them live. I have them sign an e-sign. E Unless it's like an elderly person, then I will meet with them and have them sign all of that. So you've got that that being the first step. And, and when, you're, when you flip this paper over, it's just one page. It's so short, but it gives you something to be talking to them about. And you're going to send it home with them so they can refer back to it. So then we talk about the property search. And in the property search, I, I, I also have this other document. Let me open this document. So this is the document I'm referring to in my... I keep this in a manila folder for myself, and then I have their Epic folder that I share with them. So I'm kind of going over these things right here in my own head and in my notes, and as I'm explaining this. So part of it is the property search. So Mr. Buyer, you know, I, I want to talk to you about the property search and how are we going to set that up? Because there's a lot of work on the back end of searching for property that I have to do. I have to set the appointments up. The sellers are vacating their property during our time. I really like to map out seven to 10 homes. I just go over all of this stuff with them. So showings, I set and coordinate the appointments. The average person looks at seven to 10 homes before choosing one. I put that out there because I want to fill their head with the fact that I'm not showing them more than 10 homes um, if we're out looking for properties because they will have you show them 30 homes and you they do not know what they're looking for if they're asking to look for more than 10. A lot of those things could be narrowed down in the very beginning by them driving through neighborhoods, by them driving the properties before they ask you to show them to them. 
anyway, these are all things that you just, you, you got to figure out how this conversation is going to go in your head, but this is meant to give you, for you to practice and practice with somebody. So then I say, okay. And then after we end up finding one that you really want to, that you really want to make an offer on, this is where I go in and I do a market analysis on the property to see if it's priced right, to see if there's any, um, you know, just all of the stuff. I'm going to send you a seller's disclosure. We're going to have our insurance company do a report on it. All of these things are going to happen when we're ready to write an offer. And depending on the current market and what kind of market you're in at the time, you know, you can, you can adjust this. And I always say if they're priced right, they sell for close to the asking price. It's all about the pricing. But it's also about the time of the year. Like right now, you know, it's kind of a buyer's market and they can they can make offers for less than. But you have to, as the agent, have to do the homework, the market analysis. And that's, you know, all of the back end stuff. And then we'll go ahead and write the offer up. And there's a lot of questions and a lot to that process as well. And you just want to educate them on some of the things that you'll be asking them. You know, this is why we need the pre-approval letter. We need to know how much money are they putting down. We need to know what type of loan they have. We need to know, do they want to include a home warranty in this contract? How many days do they need to close? All of those questions are need to be answered so we could write up a strategic offer that's going to get accepted. So then we, after getting your offer accepted, this is where the real estate agent really goes to work. We coordinate inspections, appraisal. We handle all of the communication between the title company, other realtors, inspectors, et cetera. So, so basically what I'm saying is like in this whole thing, this conversation with this buyer, this is where you want them at the end to say you're hired, right? I've never had anybody, I've never met with anyone that at the end, that they didn't say, oh my gosh, we really do need you. This is you showing your value as a buyer agent, what they are. So then at the last part, we're going to set up the closing. I'm going to attend the closing with you and we will have, you know, we will have pre-closing documents, whatever you want to say. Um, but this is something to just get you started. So this is my home buying process, the document that goes in the folder for the buyer to take home with them. And like I said before, behind this document, I put the home warranty document and whatever handout for whatever title company I'm using right now. And you could just ask your title company, do you have any buyer handouts that will help us in assisting our buyers? So that's that's the whole process that I go over first. So I want to go back to our document here. So that's, and that's the buyer appointment too, is going over that. So that's the process doc, which is in the packet for the buyer appointment. And there's a lot of other things that you can do. I, I did used to have a printout from um, my former brokerage that was like a wheel that showed the whole process, but your title company can probably give you that as well. Just whatever you want to put in that buyer pack is up to you. Just don't show up empty handed ever to meet with a client. You need to give them some kind of item of value to walk away with. And also you need to have educated them on all of that stuff and what it's going to look like. And then also you need to get them set up with a lender so that they get that pre-approval done. A lot of times they'll say, oh yeah, I'm working with my lender um, that, and they're with the credit union or something and you kind of got to go with that and that's okay. But if they say, no, I haven't started that, you connect them. You say, well, these are three of my favorite lenders. Um, you know, I And then maybe point out what you like best about each of them, create a document, put that in for, put their information all on the document and throw that in your buyer packet. But I, I personally do have about three lenders that I love working with. And depending on who my client is, I'm going to set them up with one of those lenders or let them know, like if they're VA, I'll say, well, you know what, this, this lender really does specialize in VA loans. Um, if they are an investor, I have a lender who really looks at their whole portfolio and we'll work with them according to that. And then 
all of that. And then I want you guys to set up a search also. So now what I really was would like to do is have you guys couple up or you could just do this on your own, whatever you want to do, since um, we don't have a lot of people on the call today, this could be part of your homework. So I have one more slide in here. Um, homework week number two. So this is, like I said, the most of the work for this whole workshop is in the homework. And I want you guys to message me if you have questions. If you're stuck somewhere and you can't get past the first week's homework, then please come to me so that I can jump on a call with you and help you get it figured out. So homework for number week number two, I want you to choose a mock buyer. Have one of your friends or family members, spouse, kid even, like it doesn't really matter. Just choose a mock buyer. And if you're, you know, if Corey and Erica, you guys want to work together, you could do that. But get a buyer and I want you to get your buyer set up in Lofty on a search, that mock buyer, because next week I want you guys to come to the call with a property in mind that we are going to, we're going to write an offer on. So next week, week three is going to be about writing the offer how to use zip forms, how to write the offer, all the different things I'm going to go through with you on that call. So part of the homework for today needs to be having that property set up. So choose somebody to enter their information. If you can't find anybody, choose me. Send me the link to your Lofty account. I'll go in, I'll be your pretend buyer and I will find a property and I'll say this one. And, you know, you can even go so far as to go show, go, go with your spouses or friends and go preview three or four properties like you are actually showing them these properties. Practice makes perfect. And in this business, that couldn't be more true. There's nothing worse than being inexperienced and going out on your first appointment. It's, it's scary as heck. And especially if you don't know those people, you're thinking, how am I going to prove that I'm a the realtor they need to work with. And so use your team, use us at Epic. Say, you know, I'm part of an amazing team of agents. Like I, I'm new, but I, we got your back. Like I have a mentor who's going to be looking over everything that has to do with your contract that's been in real estate for 20 years. All kinds of different ways that you could do this. But it's up to you. And the beauty of having a real estate business, there's no right or, well, there are some wrong ways, but there's no one way to do these things. This is a creative process. And you now have a small business and setting up these business practices are what you need to do. So if you're if you're in this class live or you're watching the recording, I would love to see you having done all of this work. And this is why I did this as a four week workshop so that you can have the time to do it. So if you didn't finish week one and that's why you're not on the call, then go back to week one and get that done and then work on week two. You could do this at your own pace. So um yeah. That about concludes week two. So now I'm going to stop the recording so that anybody on the call can. Um... All right. See you next week.